Okay, so you guys know PMR. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. PMR is a buddy of mine named Robbie. I'm Rob. We're at PMR outside of Atlanta, Marietta, Georgia. And it's the end of the day. He told me if I made this one funny, I could have nine minutes. Okay, <laughs> we'll see how we do. Um, I come from television. Um, Robbie comes from corporate AV and theater world. And we love to have very wholehearted belly laugh conversations about terms and how they work, how they don't work across industries, right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a case study from one of Robbie's shows. So they've been nice enough to get me all of this technology. Uh, actually, it, it takes a lot to see, think, program this stuff. And I would encourage you, if you're gonna do a comm show, um, temper your, what your client says a little bit with what they say at the beginning and what that's gonna turn into at the end. Uh, I've heard from running audio, which I don't do, front of house is easy, you're the judge. But when you run monitors, you are serving the wishes and the foolhardy desires and requests from each individual person and their each individual mix for themselves. And I would say that comms is a lot like monitors. It's your job to interpret what they're saying, look at what they're getting, and use those two to really craft the experience that they're asking for and the technology that you have. And always keep margins because um, the oh, by the way, is real. So Robbie, <laughs> Robbie, we were in a break, and Robbie took a big old piece of paper and did a client drawing of a show that they did. So here, let's see it. This is Robbie's show from a little while back, and they didn't use free speak to do this show, but he challenged me to make a diagram and show how I would do this with free speak, and specifically the free speak eight pack belt pack that they have uh, to be the core of this show. And so um, I did not, when I was designing this, go straight to the config software. I instead went to first um, the Google. <laughs> Good. I get my nine minutes now that I said the Google. That was funny. <laughs> I would. I use Google Sheets, and if we can go to the PC, Rob, um, this is kind of how I organized my thoughts. Uh, I have pack names down the left here, and I have channel kind of inventory across the top. And so this isn't going to make much sense. We need to go to Robbie's description of his show, which he has. I asked him for, I don't know, one or two pages to just to tell me what's going on in this show, the highlights, so we could make it into this video. And he, of course, gave me a slide deck with eight or nine slides. So, Robbie's show. Who's at the front of house? I'm going to fly through this, guys. The producer, an A1, lighting director, and a client. Who is at Video Village? The screen switcher, PowerPoint, Playback Pro, the camera switcher and the camera shader or the record guy uh, who's on stage, a stage manager, and two stage hands. Getting people on and off the stage as the stage manager and getting stuff on and off the stage as the stage hands. Why am I differentiating in between the stage hands and the stage manager? It's gonna make a good example later on about uh, department hierarchy. But so remember, in this department, as a stage manager, we have stage hands, or one stage manager, and two additional stage hands, okay? And then who is elsewhere? <laughs> I don't think that's correct, right grammar. I, I didn't do that right. Elsewhere in the room, we have two spot ops and five camera operators. And so some of these line items are gonna roll up into five cameras are actually gonna be one destination on our comm system, okay? So we don't actually have whatever the total is of those some of those parts. Um, five cameras are all gonna be, uh, from a comms perspective, one destination. Um, and then who's backstage? Uh, we have a master electrician. He told me what ME stands for. Master electrician at the, the Dimmer Beach. And we have an A2 back there. And then we have a backstage green room that needs a speaker for talent. <laughs> Band number so-and-so, you're up next. It's not a rock show. Um, speaker number so-and-so, five minutes to the stage. Right, so that speaker would be called a stage announce or a green room speaker or whatever. It's gonna be silent until the producer or whoever is authorized to talk on that speaker 
are going to be silent until they speak and speak only on that channel. So that's the requirements that the client gave me to craft the system here. So uh, over to the PC here. I like to think about the inventory that I have available to me and, you know, that is packs over here and then I can give them names, um, channels across the top and then I can give them names and then I have some notes. We're going to scroll down a little bit just show you the rest of this sheet and show you that we are using the base station. The camera director will be sitting at the base station and so we've uh, pro done a little bit of programming for him. And then the ports we've included in to these uh, talk and listen destinations because we are working within the parameters of the gear that we own, and that is free speak, eight belt packs, one producer or one base station, and then port in and port out opportunities. Okay, so um, don't do it yet, Robbie, because I want to get I want to make this screen switch. Okay, now we need to see the Mac. The Mac is showing us the overview of our config software for the uh, FreeSpeak base station. And I didn't, I don't have a whole lot of belt packs populated on here, but um, it doesn't really matter whether the belt packs are populated or not. That's the beauty of roles. Roles are not fixed necessarily to belt packs. Roles can be, oh, I'm going to make a, de a description of settings for someone who's going to show up later. And then when they show up or when they power up their belt pack, we can then assign that role to that person in the belt pack when they show up. So it's kind of important. Uh, and oh, I wanna show you one more thing that is kind of important in just ergonomics to me. Uh, when I work as a stage manager or a floor manager, I kind of try to wear my belt pack over here on my left side where I'm still able to use my, my right hand. And I program my most frequent talk destination on this B button, right? And then my next most common is gonna be the D button. And then I store other secondary talk uh, opportunities back here on this other button. So for me, when I'm programming and I try and do it for other people, B is my primary and D is my secondary. All right, and just remember this reply button out here too. That is physically where that reply button is. All right, so. Just keep that in mind when we talk about, um, or when you say, why in the world did you lay that out that way, Rob? That makes no sense. Uh, and also remember that we're gonna make a plan and then people are gonna show up and with their realities, we're gonna change that plan. But what, we're gonna try and make it as close as we can uh, with still room for them to show up with their special requests. So um, let's go first to assignments and over here, we have built an audio channel. We have, and if you'll notice here, it says there's no participants. That's, while it's accurate, it's not really fair because there's gonna be belt packs that show up in that, and then when they come online, then they start to participate and they count against this, against this number zero. But at the same time, there are things like stage here that do show a number, even though they don't have any participants online, the reason they are showing participants is, oh, because I'm wearing belt pack stage hand number two. Uh, let's choose a different one. How about, uh, video, I don't think I programmed this right. This is, this is really bumming me out. Okay, well, we'll finish programming this in a second. I did not put the ports into my groups yet, so we'll see how to do that at the end. Um, but I'm gonna kind of show you going through my list and how I chose out my channels. Um, so back on the PC, we're gonna look at uh, the LD is a pretty, um, a pretty uh, straightforward example of a typical two department um, person. Their first department, which is pretty much true of everybody, their channel one button is going to be the producer or the run of show or the call and everybody can find their run of show traffic on channel one and then i like to organize the channel two or that b button at the front of my pack to be the department heads and the traffic the main channel traffic for that department so lighting is going to talk on channel two into their lighting department and i will show you um 
here back on the on the uh, Mac how to oh um, there are no lighting technicians wearing free speak belt packs their lighting director is the only one wearing a free speak belt pack and so on the PC a lighting director is wearing a free speak belt pack and the lighting department is attached to two wire port number two and so they are in the lighting category so I'm gonna go back over to the Mac and say that this lights is a channel and I am going to populate the two wire port two wire port number two B and I've already named this that's the part I did do <laughs> and I'm gonna add this as a talker and listener to this group and so now the lights group when somebody talks on their light button the LD will have it on button number two when he talks the audio is going to come in and out of two wire port number two on the base station We're, that's as simple as it goes so I'm gonna do that again for cams because I did not program cams correctly either so cams is also going to be only uh, the camera director is the only one in there and I'm going to chain two wire port number one or a has already been labeled cams and I'm going to add that to the cams channel and now when anybody talks on cams it will go out the port to the rest of the comm system does that make sense Robbie nodded his head I don't know whether you guys nodded your head or not I don't know why I asked questions of you guys in there all right and then the third person is going to be the video guys I think I made a group for video yes made a group for video this video group needs to have the two wire channel that's planned and plumbed physically to the two wire wired belt packs and wired user stations down the line so we'll add that to that all right so now I want to show you guys and, and so basically every department head has their department on channel two and has production on channel one and I want to show you guys a little bit of just um, insight or in-depth whatever you want to say to the idea of hierarchy and I want to go back to the idea of the stage managers the producer the producer the conversation that is going to be happening around the stage is very multi-layered and we will, the goal of comms is to keep everything as quiet as possible everybody wants to hear only what they want to hear and so we're going to run some interference for them and we're going to craft it so that we are keeping everybody as quiet as possible. So I want to show you a little bit of hierarchy that I would put together on the stage, the idea stage. So over everything, we need to be able to hear the producer. This is from the stage manager's perspective. And then below that, as a department head, we have a stage manager. And then below that, we have two stage hands. These guys are going to be grabbing set pieces. They're going to be moving together. They're going to be lifting. And you know what? They need to be able to talk without pressing their buttons. And they need to be able to talk to each other freely without gumming up the stage manager or gumming up the producer. They want to be able to latch open on some things. And so what we have is we have uh, stage hands talking to stage hands and so I would say that we have one talk group here where these guys can just chitter chatter pitter patter and then we have another talk group here where the stage manager can hear them but may not even want to hear their response if they were to talk amongst themselves um, hey guys where's that uh, prop that I asked for Oh, hey, I don't know where it is. Do you know where it is? Yeah, I think I left it up here, blah, 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 blah. And then somebody's going to press a button and say, we're right on it, boss. And then even more so, there is a stay, another third group of communication, I would say here, including the producer. Now, do you think that the stagehands should be able to reply to the producer? I don't know. I don't have an opinion. Just realize you have the tools to be able to say yes to that or say no to that. And... The free speak will allow you to latch, not latch, or not even be able to talk. So what if the producer was asking, 
for something from the stage manager, from the stage crew, the yellow group, and the stage manager replied, and the stagehands didn't hear that reply. That would be bad. So think about the whole experience of your users and the fact that if a question is asked to a group, then the group should probably also hear the answer. And I have to tell you, there's it's a lot of stress that can be put on people when stuff like that isn't addressed. So um, just be thinking about that. So this idea of hierarchies can be easily crafted in these comms. And I've done this and I've addressed this in the build that I'm showing you today with what uh, in the television world we call a love channel. So I'm gonna show you a stage hands belt pack. Um, we have <laughs> button A at the back of my pack is the producer. I have a volume knob for that. And it's listen only. So I've made the decision that this stage hand can't talk to the producer. And then on the stage button, I have a talk and force listen. So at the front of my belt, I've got uh, my opportunity to talk and listen um, as a stage hand, I can talk and listen to the stage group. It's non-latching, so I can't get stuck as being a talker in that group. And then on that D button, I have stage love is the channel. And it, oops, it's not latching. Let's make it latching. All right, so I think that this is a very well-crafted, staged group approach with the different talk groups like I have here on the iPad. Um, we could say that this is latching. We could say that this one is non-latching. And we could say that this one is listen only. And so in these three choices right here, we have crafted and protected the rest of the production from giving these guys freedom to latch and talk to each other while, I guess like, like I say, protect the rest of the production from latching microphones. So, oh, one more concept I want to go over, and that is the idea of a point-to-point. -point. I said in a couple of videos back that this is basically a party line system. It can operate as a point-to-point -point system, but for most people, it should be thought of as a party line system with lots of opportunities to make party lines. However, in the programming and in my spreadsheet over here on the, the Mac, I have some notes. Um, from the pro I have a relationship here in between a producer and a client. The producer is able to talk and everyone is able to hear him and people can reply and they have the ability to talk back to them based on the permissions we've given them. But I have two opportunities here out in the notes. Button three is a client point to point and button four is that stage manager point to point. And so what that is, is that producer has buttons on his belt pack that would talk directly to that person. And then they have buttons on their panel to talk directly back. It's not an opportunity for other people to hear that conversation. And in that way, it's a little bit of a matrix um, feel of things. And then one more thing I wanna discuss about uh, turning, getting the most out of free speak, and that is getting the fifth button to do something, this reply button on the, uh, on the front of the pack, in the programming here on the Mac, I'm going to go to the stage manager and I'm going to look at this reply button and this stage announce is programmed to come out the stage announce. And so anytime that stage manager or the producer want to talk to talent in the green room, they press that stage announce button and their voice comes across that. So. Um, I think that we need to go back to the keynote and see how I did because I think that one thing we didn't show is the criteria. So as I go back through these, think about the ways that I addressed them in my programming because I think that I addressed each one. Everyone needs to hear when the producer talks, right? So the producer is, can be heard on the A knob of everybody on our spreadsheet, right? Uh, the producer only needs to hear back from department heads. That was addressed through giving department heads talk access on that A channel. I don't know that I showed anybody that, but the LD 
for instance, has talk access, or the A1 has talk access, and the A2 doesn't, to that producer channel. A system where different departments can talk amongst themselves freely. We talked about that of the B channel. A good example on the, Mac, or on the PC here is the uh, A2 and the A1, both having the audio channel as their second button. Um, these people, this department can talk freely throughout that stage ISO, or uh, audio ISO is, is basically what it is. All right, and our PowerPoint has, we, on, we only want to hear the producer to talk to the client. Oh, we will only want the producer to talk to the client. So the client has their own belt pack and they're not listed as a destination for anybody to talk to. The producer has a button, a point to point for that client and the client has a point to point to the producer. Now that may seem silly because in your mind's eye, they're sitting next to each other at the front of the house. But one of, what if one walks away? Well, they've always got that button in reserve to be able to point to point talk to each other. And then a stage announce out to the green room. And that's the last thing we went over. So from Robbie's pencil through the spreadsheet and then back to the uh, programming of the free speak. That's a pretty complicated show, offering everybody a little bit and exactly what they need. Hope that this has been informative. I'm, I'm not sure we're going to go with entertaining, but maybe that was too. Guys, call PMR for anything you, you need, and um, let me know if I can help. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Yeah. <laughs>